Hey guys, what's up? Um, hopefully not too much is going on. And to the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. To the fathers who doing both mom and dad duty, happy Mother's Day. Um, I haven't had a chance to work on much because I have been studying for my insurance and annuities test, and I passed the test. So now I just have to finish filling out my paperwork so that I can get my insurance license. Um, the test was hard, but hopefully this will be the beginning of a new career. Um, and I get to help people who, who need insurance uh, to protect their families in the event something happens to them. Or for their car, or for their house, da-da-da, whatever. As you can see, my hair is out. I died, had it died, but this, this camera is like backwards. Um, this is how long it is now. Um, it's it's uh, not as long as it was because when I got it done back in February, I had her cut. She cut about five inches off. Um, so it's a little poofy because I don't have any... Um, curling wax so and I don't have any curling irons anymore other than my regular curling irons from when I was a cosmetologist so I didn't feel like turning that on and, and doing that because I need to get a mirror so I can see what I'm doing so the only thing that I've finished since the last video is I, I just have to weave in finish weaving in the ends and trim the ends and putting a button on it but I made a little girl little baby dress and it's made with um Hobby Lobby's The Pink uh, Sparkle. And it's really cute. I wish you guys can see this. So, but it's a really cute little dress. I just got to put a button back here to, for the closure and trim the ends, and it's completely done. This is for my friend Trina. She had a little girl um, at the end of last month. So, this is for her. So, I have another friend and new co-worker for my my future job that uh that's my air quotes it's cool so it'll be like a little dressy and i'm sorry if the audio isn't matching the video um, uh, seems delayed to me so I might have to try and redo this video if it's too jacked up. So this is um the top part. And as you can see, this will be the part that buttons up right here. And so it's going to be, you can see the black sparkle really good. So it's going to be the black sparkle and the body is going to be the white sparkle. And then um the trim at the bottom will be the black sparkle and then the whole top part including the shoulders and the sleeve area will be the black sparkle uh, and then you just put a little black sparkle at the bottom trim part so it's it's going well um, this pattern is is easy so yeah and I'm writing it down as I go um, because I'm going to deviate from the original pattern. Uh, I'm doing a shell stitch instead of the V stitch that the video that I'm look, watching. Which is bags, bags of, let me see. Bags a day crochet, I think that's the name of it. Um, see if I can find it real quick for y'all. So he says, it's bag a day crochet and more. And it's her crochet strawberry shortcake baby dress, zero to sixty months, zero to six months, zero to six months. <laughs> so that is where um I'm getting this from, and I'm trying to shut some stuff down. So me get back to you guys let me find the here we go all right so i'm back so that is where the original pattern is from but um i'm using it for the yoke 
but for the body I'll be doing my own thing this time because I just I like fast and attractive versus um, a step I don't even though it looks nice I could get rid of that other row and I could just do a v-stitch or I could do a shell complete shell stitch where the three double crochet chain um, two three double crochet and um, at the end of this dress I did a shell pico which is a basically three double crochet chain four and then twist it and go through the bottom stitches and then chain three and you just keep doing it all around and you see you get like this little shell stitch with the little pico bump on the end of it if you do it that way so I did that on my own that's like my own little thing addition to this particular pattern um, but it's a it's a easy thing to do. It's something I can do on lunch now that I won't won't be studying. Um, now that I'll finish getting my insurance, finish the insurance and annuities test, I gotta start studying for the um, securities test to get my securities um, licensing licensing done, and and then we'll go from there. So. I have been working on my socks, so I'm just going to show you guys where I'm at. Um, with this sock, I've reached the portion where I'm going to start doing my toe decreases, so I have to change yarns. And I haven't figured out what yarn I want to use yet to do the toe and the heels with. I was going to use the rest of that Debbie, I think it was Debbie Bliss or, that I had. Excuse me, but I I don't I don't want to use that. I want to use something else for the toe and the heel. So I gotta look through my donated sock yarn. Almost all my, I I only own that I purchased myself. Maybe if you don't count, well, it's a lace weight. It's not like a sock weight. That Caron yarn, which I think I did a shawl bar shawl. We already made that one part. Um, but I want something darker for the toe and heel, like a navy blue. And I have been looking at my yarns, sock yarns, because this is pat patent, patents, or patent, however you guys say it, um, uh, sock yarn. I have some nitpicks for Lishi, but I don't want to use, it's a, a dark green, it's like a green variegated green not very it has a stripe I don't want to use that and so I have an acrylic black but it's in like a sport weight I don't want to use that for the toe and heel I want to stay within this get this gauge right here so I want to stay oh that's pretty much the colors it's a little muted but it's showing up pretty good today so yeah, so I gotta look at the stock yarn, most of that I have, and pick one that would complement this and be as dark as I want it to be for the heel and the toe. Um, this is the other sock right here. This stuff is getting tangled up. So give me a second. I need to untangle this stuff for y'all so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is the second sock. As you can see, it's, I don't have it. I haven't reached that point yet. Um, it's about let me see. It's about I got about almost three inches to catch up to this other one, and then that, you know, and that's what I'm gonna be doing next is catching this one up to this point because I want. I'm trying. To keep them as close to the same point of completion as I can so that once I finish one sock, I can just hop onto the other sock, do the toe and the heel, and I'm, I'm done. I got my pair of socks. And you guys see how long it's taking me to do one pair of socks. Now you see why I swap with people all the time. You want some hands playing yarn? Here are my sock measurements. <laughs> and I was saying use the hands playing yarn. Or fiber or however. But um, that is why I'm so quick to jump on a swap with somebody who says, Oh, I'll make you a pair of socks. <laughs> Here, give me some of your hand spun. You guys know I'm not lacking hand spun for like nobody's business. So, 
Um, so yeah, so that's what's going on right now with me. And I'm still working on my Project Gratitude. And it is... It is it is a thing of happiness, I'm telling you guys. Like, you should see people's faces when I stop them and I say, Hey, tell me three things right now you're grateful for. Some people have to think about it. But anyway, oops. I just finished updating my DMX software. So, yeah. It, had, it always went up this stupid video once you finish up and upgrading. Let me find you guys again. There we go. Alright, so yeah, so anyway, back to Project Gratitude. So like I said, you should see people's faces when I stop them and I ask them three things that you're grateful for. Just three things that you're grateful for. And they, some people have to think about it. And then they go, most people say, I'm grateful to be alive today. They start smiling. Then the smile gets bigger. Then they say, I'm grateful for whoever's in their life that they love. And a lot of them say, I'm grateful to have a job. That's the three things you hear most of the time. Um, and so then I tell them, and you, and they're, they're smiling now. They got this happy look on their face now. It just starts your brain going in a different direction from where you were. Like you could have been grumbling and moaning and groaning about working your head or you didn't really want to be there, but you, you know, but then when you, when they are, when they are vote, when they, blah, when they say it out loud to someone else, and they share the things they're grateful for. It just brings this this happiness over them. And every time I see them, if I see them again throughout the day, they're just smiling. And they look at me and they just shake their head and smile. It just just brings them this sense of joy that that they didn't have before I, I challenged them to tell me three things that they're grateful for. And then I give them their homework. I tell them, on your first break or on your lunch break, you have to call someone that you love or someone you haven't heard from in a while or somebody you've been meaning to, to talk to or catch up with. And you need to tell them three things about that person that you're grateful for for them being in your life. And and then you give that person the same homework I gave you. They have to go out and they have to do it. So Project Gratefulness spreads out like a virus, y'all. <laughs> like a virus, it spreads out. Um... I'm sorry about the reflection in my glasses, but I removed my reflective, uh, it was, you know how I like, if you wear glasses and you get that anti-glare coating, that anti-glare coating is what gets scratched and starts like flaking off and stuff and it messes with your vision. So I just used some, um, itch, the itch stuff and removed the, the reflective thing from my glasses. So now they're not anti-glare, but they're not scratched up anymore either. Um... And when I get my new glasses, probably in August, I'm probably not going to have the anti-glare coating put on those either. Because it seems like to me that that coating is what gets scratched up so fast. Because I don't remember when I was growing up, when we didn't have an anti-glare coating, my glasses didn't get scratched up so fast. You know what I'm saying? And so it's, I think that's just a way for them to get more money out of us. <laughs> um... Although you don't have all this reflective stuff going on either. So another thing that I've been working on is I finally sat down last weekend and took my laptop apart and put my new hard drive in it. And I've upgraded everything on it, reinstalled everything. And so I, I have mobile computer again. Um, I like typing on the keyboard. Um, I like typing on my keyboard. It's more comfortable for me because I have big fingers. And so when I'm trying to, the thumb thing doesn't work when you got thumbs like mine. Because you end up smashing the wrong buttons. Whereas with a keyboard, I can just type my, just type. So yeah, so I finally did that. So that's one thing, another thing I can scratch off my list, okay? I know I haven't taken individual pictures of the fiber. However, just like with the yarn and the people who have purchased the yarn, I've not had heard anything bad from anyone about the yarn that I sent them from the hand spun. And so the same thing is for the fiber that I dye. Um, I'm doing the same thing with the fiber where you can purchase it at an affordable rate and to clear out the fiber. And then you can get just tell me an idea of what color you want and I'll send you the closest color to what you requested. And um, then you can spin it up and have fun with it. Um, 
and I can get it off my shelf and out of my inventory. So if you go to my Etsy, you'll see a link for the same thing, Mystery Fiber, and it's it's either Romney or Falkland. Uh, I haven't bagged up any of the alpaca um, yet, so if you're interested in the alpaca, um, just give me a color. It's natural. It's not dyed. The alpaca is not dyed. The Romney and the um, Falkland is dyed. Um, I haven't the the all the alpaca is natural colors and most of my alpaca is uh grays, chocolates, um, tawny brown, um, tan whites, and I also have some white BFL and uh and some blends. I have a blend that has a lot of Angora rabbit in it. So if you would like to try that blend, just let me know. And I'm doing it in four ounce increments because I don't want to shortchange anyone and I can control that better um, and make sure that people who want to try it can, can get it and you're you're not just taking it off my hands you're giving me more room in my craft room and taking it off my hands I can't in my lifetime spend it all I will have to be spending 24 7 365 to probably spin up all this fiber um, I will have to be retired, and that's all I do all day, like a job, eight hours a day, is just sit and spin. And I can't spin it all, so I might as well go ahead and get my my um, inventory down to a, a, a manageable amount. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so feel free to contact me on my Etsy. You guys can reach Etsy through YouTube, um, or you can go to She Spins Yarn, all one word, on Etsy. And you can reach reach out to me that way. Um, if you're interested in purchasing a two or three pound bag of fiber, uh, let me know. I do have several of those too. And um, before I start breaking them down into individual baggies, so just let me know, and uh, we can negotiate on the price and stuff. But like I said, my goal is to try and get as much stuff out of this room as possible because I can't use it all in my lifetime. But I want enough stash so that when I do get to retirement age. Our house, Lord willing, I'll still be able to use my hands <laughs> that I'll have enough stash to keep me occupied um, when that time comes. And so that's pretty much what's going on with me. Um, I uh, My only pet peeve lately is the way people drive. So I already, already went over that. I've been seeing less and less I think people got sent home from work for the way they were dressed. So thank you to management for that. So I haven't I haven't had to be visually uh assaulted as much as I had that first day it was really warm. Lord, y'all just don't know. I mean, some people had stuff that made you just want to throw up in your mouth a little bit and you're looking at them like this is a professional environment. This is a corporate environment. Why are you dressed like some hoochie mama getting ready to go stand on the corner and sell your body for money? That's how some of these women were dressed. Straight up, had no business wearing what they were wearing in a professional work environment. I mean, it's like, I'm not a prude. I grew up, I went to clubs, you know, I dressed not like that. But I, I dressed in clothes where I showed a little more skin than I, I normally would have. But I won't show like all my cleavage. I won't show like, you know, just won't show on everything. Okay. Um, it's just, I just don't understand from the way I was raised, you know, Southern and all that, all this stuff, shit. Yeah. But still, as a female, I don't understand why some people have, think it's attractive to just let it all hang out, so to speak. That's not attractive. And if you think a man is truly finding you attractive, then you're wrong. He's looking at you as easy prey. And a lot of people don't want to wrap that around their heads. A lot of these men out here, you are, you are, the way you dress and the way you're showing your body, you're not the woman he wants to take home to his mama. To let his mama meet the woman he plans on marrying and keeping in his life for the rest of his life. That's not you. You is his booty call. You are his booty call. Somebody to get rid of his sexual frustrations and sexual this, that, and the other 
and then move on to someone that he's looking for to be the mother of his children and to take home to his mama and grandmama and sisters. If his mama, grandmama, and sisters dress like you, that's different. You might be what he's looking for in his life because that's all he knows. But if his mama and grandma and sisters have not, are not dressed as you do and do not put themselves out there in the flesh, so to speak, then you are not what he's looking to take home to his family and asking him, when I'm going to meet your mama, when I'm going to meet your mama, and he basically ignores you, that's a wake-up call right there, okay? I tell people all the time, you can do bad by yourself. You don't need somebody else dragging you down to their level. So raise your head up, cover up, dress attractively without showing all God gave and made of you to the world. Okay? Cover it up. A man is more enticed by what he can't see than by what you are letting every man see, touch, sniff, smell, taste. Okay? I'm just putting it out there <laughs> the way it is. Alright? So just think about it. Before you go out there dressed up like you're getting ready to go stand on the corner and make some money, think about how you look. I don't care how nice your body might be shaped or all this other stuff. Is You don't have to show it to everybody to be attracted, to be wanted, to be loved. Okay? Some of y'all, alright, this is why. I challenge some of y'all to this. Go find some nice, attractive clothes that aren't super tight. Where your cleavage, your breasts ain't about to fall out your shirt if you bend over. And where your skirts ain't hugging every little curve of your booty. Just, just nice clothes. Dress that way for a month. And see how people treat you versus when you dress provocatively and like that. See if they treat you like you got a brain in your head and intelligence versus treating you like Mm, she just don't know. This girl must be stupid. I'm going to use and abuse. Because that's what goes to so many men's heads. If you don't believe it, why don't you ask some of them. You got some boys, some homeboys who will be honest with you? Ask them. If you, What do you think when you see this lady? What do you think when you see this lady? They will candidly tell you the truth. Believe me, when I was in the military, I used to ask when they would tell me. Mm, that one right there, I, I could take her in the club up against the wall in the dark. That's what some of the guys would say about some of the girls. And I'd be like, well, how? He said, look at how short that skirt is. You can just shift it a little bit and you in there. That's how they talk. That's how they talk. Ask them. Ask them sometimes what they be thinking when they looking at you dressed as you dress. And that's not, that's not sexy. That's not something you, kind of attention you want. That is, you are basically putting yourself out there for predators. Okay? So, get a grip on yourself. All right? Have as much respect for yourself as you want someone to have for you, okay? Because if you don't respect yourself, why should anybody else respect you, all right? So, let me get off the clothes kick. I grew up as a tomboy, all right? I was I always wore jeans, t-shirts, and stuff, because I was busy running around in fields, in the woods, climbing trees, out in the garden, you name it, playing basketball stuff. I, had, I was covered up. And then even after I got to the age where I started noticing boys, I still covered up because I didn't want them. I was shy. I didn't want them looking at me like that. Okay, or trying to put their hands on me. That'll get you punched in the face real fast. And then after I became an even after I became an adult and a mother, I still was shy and I didn't want people looking at me as an object, as just breast, ass, and everything in between. I wanted people to look at me for who I was, which was Juanita, somewhat intelligent female, okay? And that's how I always have been. I'm, I'm a listener. I listen. I'm, I'm learning how to come out of my shell through this um, self-improvement thing I'm doing right now. And doing videos helped me to, to get, start doing that. But I could tell y'all and talk to y'all on videos but I still wasn't doing it out in the real world. This this afforded me an audience to 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 vent, and I try to be myself as much as possible. And then out in the real world, I was constantly listening 
but I still wasn't interacting as much as I should have been. So now that's changing through Project Gratitude. I'm stopping complete strangers, people I don't know, and I'm asking them, tell me three things right now you're grateful for. And that's helping me to come out of my shell and speak to people who I normally would have never even spoken to. Okay? So, and I'm listening to self-help stuff, and and it's like like a, a world is opening up for me. A world that had I had the right guidance should have opened up for me when I was younger. <laughs> I should not be finding these things for myself now at the age of 47. You know, um, but God gives you what you need when you need it, not when you should have got it, would have got it, or wanted it. You get it when you need it. Um, so, yeah. That's all I have for you guys today. I'm sorry it took so long. It's uh, 20, what should have been like a five minute video, it's not a 25 minute video. And um, I'm looking forward to you guys sharing your, your current projects with me on Instagram. I, I love Instagram. I love when I go on my lunch break and I can pop up Instagram and I can see all the things that people are making that have befriended me on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, my friends on Facebook. I love just seeing the things you guys are making because like I said with me working on me I haven't had as much time to knit and crochet as I normally do and so it's it's wonderful to see the projects you guys are working on and then it's like some of them I'll save the picture of it to look back on later because it's a project I'm interested in and attempting now that stone point shawl oh no poncho the stone point poncho it's still, I still haven't worked on it much because there was an errata. That's why I was frustrated because I was like, why isn't this thing working? Why is my count off? Well, there was an errata. And so now I got to go back and start over again with the errata. And hopefully it'll go smoothly for me now. I'm not, even though I've been knitting now for several years, I'm still not good at reading um, charts, knitting charts. Um, so it's still easy for me. I'm not comfortable with knitting like I am with crochet. With crochet, in you, you, you could easily kind of add a stitch here, add a stitch there, get your count back. Nobody can really tell. With knitting, you can tell because things don't line up, especially if it's a pattern that has like a you know a, de a decorative pattern. Um, where it's, it's got like leaves or or triangles or things need to line up. This count needs to be perfect. Um, so yeah, so, um, I still am not as comfortable with knitting. I'm not as creative with knitting as far as me coming up with my own stuff. I have to use patterns out of the, the dictionaries and stuff like that. And even then I'm still making simple things. Um, I still haven't made a sweater, knitting a sweater. I still haven't done that and I want to do that. Uh, I still haven't done like a lacy sock work. Um, I got big feet and I wear socks hard. So I really don't see myself doing a lacy pair of socks for me unless it's like some kind of um, longer calf, you know, socks that go up over your calf. Something I can wear under a dress maybe. That's the only way I can see myself doing a lacy pair of socks if it's something I can wear under a skirt or dress for work. Um, not just to wear them out, you know, all day, every day. So, so I hope you guys are doing good. That's almost 30 minutes. I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, like Sharon said on Moms with Yarn, Tour de Fleece will be starting in July, I think she said. So I got to get my yarn and stuff picked up for this Tour de Fleece. And, um, yeah. So I got to get stuff. I'm probably doing naturals this year. Um, just bust into my natural stash some more. And like I said, I gotta go through some of this natural yarn and get it bagged up and stuff so I can get 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 it out of here and get it sold. I might just put something on Craigslist and just let somebody come, like you know, bag of bag of fiber, forty bucks, come get it, kind of thing, just to get it on out of here. So yeah, so you guys take care, take care. Blah, can you talk now? I need water. And I'll see you later. And the next time you see me, my hair will probably be reverted, and so it'll probably be back up in its braid. So enjoy. It. Enjoy it while you can. Enjoy it while you can. And so, yeah. Or to be cut again because I was looking at it when she was straightening out and I was like, mm. See, this is how I want it to lay. 
but it's so humid right now it poofs back up it won't lay flat so I'll probably wrap it tonight or something hopefully I won't sweat but with my diabetes there's nights when I wake up soaking wet with sweat and and if that's the case then this will definitely be up in the braid in the morning alright y'all take care